Yeah, somebody asked me. First of all, I want to say this again. I, I make these videos for two reasons. I, I want something to do because I'm, I'm 66 now. I just need to keep doing something, and I like to, and I like to share things with people. Uh, in this case, the car. And I'm gonna try it. So the question was, which manuals do you use? Well. And I'm going to do the, my best to explain this. Uh, ma manuals are really made for that you buy a car, it's complete. Let's say you buy a brand new car, it runs, it's complete, all the parts are there. Then you turn to the manual, and it really, the manuals really are, are, are saying this is how you fix this, and this is how you fix that. They don't say, hey, you're missing this and you're missing that, or this piece is wrong and that piece is wrong. That takes volumes. So in my case, I I did get some manuals because you do need you need something. But uh, it, it's like the manual is the last resort. The best thing to do if you have a car and you're thinking about stripping it down. Let's say you have a car like mine. It's it's. It's got some parts, but it's not complete, but you want to rebuild it. Take pictures of everything you can possibly think of. If you take off a carburetor, take a picture of all the linkage, how the linkage is hooked up. Take a Just take a picture of everything you take apart. That's why there's so many cars for sale, I think, that they're just in pieces and people give up. Uh, so. Before I show you what manuals I have, uh, so let, let's say the the flares, which I think was my last video. If I went to look up flares, I don't think I could find a detail on it. They don't always go over the extras, the the, the, the special order pieces. So if if I could find one, which I don't know that I can. It's not going to show you how to put them on. It's not going to show you what bolts you need. It's not going to tell you where to drill holes. It's not going to tell you any of that. So the way I do it is I look, I, you look at the car and in this case, I'm just going to use this flares as an example. I had no flares, but I had seen pictures of cars that had flares. Again, I've never owned a Trans Am, so I don't know anything about them. But I did see there were some holes, and I did see some pictures that there was flares. But I didn't know where to get them. I didn't know what they were made of, made out of. I didn't know how to attach them. I didn't know. I didn't know anything. So you go. So then you a good place to find pictures is, is like eBay. They have cars for sale. So you you go. Let's say you want to know about flares. You go look, and you they show you find pictures of the side of the car and the. Maybe underneath the car, any kind of pictures you want, and and save those as a JPEG to your computer, and start putting these things in order. So if you you get stuck, you can go look for them. Hope that makes sense. So, and I also want to add. I've probably said this many times. I, I know I'm a lousy video uh, maker. It's not that easy. If you want to make videos, you, you I mean you have to. If I wanted to make a good video, it's like it's like a movie. You have to plan out everything. They got directors and light lighting, and I don't want to do all that. I mean, I, of course, I can't afford director, and I don't want to do it anyway. So I just do the best I can, and there's a lot of information in there. There's a lot of bad, blurry pictures. A lot of me mumbling. But if you look through these videos. And if you can find them, it's hard to even get them in order. Because I might start on the wheel, for instance, and then the doors are next to it, so then I might switch to the door. And then while I'm at the door, then I might see something on the floor. So it's just hard to, to make these videos. But everything that I've done, I think, I've made a video on it, so it's in there somewhere. And again, I, I do this so anybody else doesn't have to suffer as much as me. I call it suffering. 
I don't know if I mean suffering, I mean uh, have such a hard time. But here's the manuals I found that are helpful. helpful. I don't know if you can read these, but this is the service manual, 1975. Again, where do you find these things? On eBay. They don't have to be new, but they got to be complete. But let's, let's just take flare, for instance. So I want to look up flare. And I'm looking through this, and I see frame and chassis, metal, plastics. Let's just try one thing, 11. Do they have flares in here? I'll go right to the beginning of the 11. Blunting close is fiberglass and ABS panel repair. Let's go to that and see what they show. There's nothing that I see on flare. So this is a problem I've had all through this. I go to do things and I can't find the information. So anyway, the, the 75 service manual is about an inch and a half thick. For 76, they didn't make their own manual. This is a GM Pontiac, 76. So they got a supplement. So that means that what, what the supplement means is if they made any changes from 75 to 76, probably the only thing that's going to be in here are the changes. So that you need both of these manuals. But again, the manual doesn't do any good if the pieces are missing. Because they don't have that many, they don't really have a lot of pictures showing you what is what. So then you have the Fisher body service manual. So let's just see if they have flares in here. And I would suggest you get this. So it's Fisher body service manual 1976. And this is an F body, remember that. So uh, I'm just going to look through here. doesn't really have to say anything about flares. It says underbody, front end, doors, rear quarter. So if you're lucky, it might have something about it, if you're lucky. The other book that's pretty good, that has helped me, is called the, uh, again, all the stuff I get off eBay, I, get, I find it as cheap as I can. The 1976 Firebird Trans Am assembly. They use this at the, at the factory. And this has this has a lot of good pictures. So if you're stuck, again, let's see if they have flares. You would think it has to be assembled. But here's the index. It's not very good. Let's see, body, ornamentation, Trans Am, w, WS, body, ornamentation, this is mine, 7.1. And I went through an index though, so 7.1. The first picture they're showing me is the transmission. Transmission, transmission, steering column. There's nothing on, on this. I mean, it might be in here somewhere, but I don't know where. But this is a good book also. These are the books that I suggest. The other book, uh, Which has helped me out. 
1967 to 76 Firebird Master Parts Catalog. And why this is good. Let me see. No, don't, not this one. get the 1976 well I use both of these but this one is so what let me explain this there's one that is uh, illustrated parts illustrated catalog so this has some pictures in it too I mean that's what I really need is pictures I just need hints So you got the illustrated, then you got miscellaneous parts. The parts might only be just the part numbers. Then there's interchange manuals and also I think I've had a few questions about where do you get certain parts. Well, a lot of the parts are interchangeable between Camaro and Firebird. So this tells you, if you get an interchange manual, it doesn't have to be this one. You might be able to, well they might not sell a part for a Firebird. I mean, if you look online, it might not say Firebird, but it might be listed as Camaro. So you just have to make sure with some, some interchange book that it's compatible and you might be able to find it. Now, a lot of these parts what I found out, the part numbers are useless. It's so, it's so old. The part they don't, nobody even uses these part numbers, and they might and they don't even use usually they don't even use the same terms. So I don't know what else to, what else to say about that. And then since I uh, put a seventy six a seventy nine T top on, I haven't got to that. Right? I'm almost there. Now, I got a 79 Fisher body because this has pictures of the T top. Doesn't mean. Anyway, it's confusing. I think the best source of information is. Uh, what, okay, another thing. If you get a parts car. Unless you get a complete parts car, which you might as well buy a brand new, a, a, a completely rebuilt car, you can get certain parts. But the good thing about a parts car is it has, if it has, let's say you need to know how to put the rear end together. If you find a parts car and it has the rear end all put together, then you can just look at it, and all you care about is the rear end. But now that's the picture you need. It shows, and it has the bolts and the so. It's just, it's not, it's not easy. It's, I'd say there's, I'd say 50% is just research, figuring out what you need to do, where to get the parts, what they're called, where they go, and so on. And the other mistake I think I was making in the beginning, do not try, in my opinion, do not try to make it factory perfect. It's impossible. They don't sell all the parts. Do it your way. Make it your car. Make it your car. I mean, I want I want the certain things. I want the gold. I want the honeycomb rims. I want the hood scoop. I want the flares. I want the spoiler. But, and I want the right dash. But, you can do whatever you want. And I want the right, oh, I, I did want the number matching engine and transmission. And then like with that hood, I was saying, the hood, I, 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 I'm getting tongue-tied. Again, it's not easy to make a video, but I, I think of things. So like the hood, I, I, li I would like to have a numbers matching hood, if there, is, if there even is such a thing. But when I took the hood off, I noticed there was, it said 1976, there was a stamp on there. So that hood, I don't know where that hood, what year that hood came off of. The hoods are all the same for these uh, four or five years, I think. I cut the serial number part off of there and welded it into that hood. 
Why not? I got more time than money. Same with the radiator support. I got the radiator, I got a new radiator support, but they don't come stamped. And I'm thinking when you open your engine, when you open your engine compartment, I like to see where it says 76. So I cut the piece out of the radiator support and I welded that in to there. Again, I'm not trying to fool anybody, I'm just, that, that's what I want to do. You make it the way you want. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's other books, you know, but they're mostly, they're mostly, uh, I don't know. It's nice to have an interchange book, because if you want to find a part, I, I, I don't switch around again, but if, if interchange book, because you can't, you can't find a part, but you, it might be on a different model car. It might be on a, I don't know, some other model made in, by GM in 76. And the interchange books will tell you that. Not every single piece, but the bigger pieces. Rear ends, radiators, uh, stuff like that. Also, aftermarket uh, body panels are not going to fit perfect. You saw, if you watched my Fleur video, you can see they just don't fit perfect for whatever reason. I mean, is it because the, the body's bent or is it because the flares aren't made perfect? I don't know, because I don't have the original. I never saw the original. So then you have to find out a way to make it work. It's your car, you can do any, anything you want. And I'm making a video that I don't care what anybody, I really don't care what anybody thinks. I'm just trying to share information. If you see something that I'm doing that's wrong, you can tell me. But I, I'm going to do it the way I want, because it's my car. You know, there's a good, there's a good uh, sh uh, YouTube channel. The guy had a car show on TV. It's called Bad Chad. And he chopped cars up and he welds them together. He's got some good, he's got some good ideas. Just not on this particular car, but on welding and body work and cutting and chopping. So anyway, I hope that, hope that helps. Uh, I just don't know what else to say. But I also hear another thing I do. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. So I, I, when I take, when I, uh, so let's say you take a thousand pictures. What do you do with all these pictures? You gotta put them on your computer and, and take the time and go through and, and name them. If not, they're just a number. So for instance, but the other problem is if I name like, if I'm taking a picture of the uh, engine bay and I call this picture how the carburetor goes, well the brake booster is going to be there and the hose, hoses are going to be there and the distributor is going to be there. and So you, you got to be careful how you name your pictures also. Because a lot of times I go back and I'm looking for a picture and it's on, it's in, it's, I wasn't focusing on that. I wasn't focusing on that area right there. I was looking, I wanted to know right here. It's really weird. But then when I do need the pictures off my computer, I just, I print them out and bring them down here or any information you can find. I got, I got a lot of information. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's a it's a struggle. It's a real struggle. If you're doing this to make money, forget it. You're not going to make any money. If you're doing this because you like to do it, that's that's the reason to do it. If you want to save money, then that's why I say don't try to make it uh, exactly perfect because you you can't do it. And you can't find the part numbers because they don't exist. They don't make the, the parts numbers in these books. Nobody uses them. I know it's a long video, but it's the best I could do. Oh, a few, a few more things. There's a part.
part shortage right now of uh, aftermarket parts. This is like a really bad time to find parts. Like I'm trying to find the upper door panel. The door, the inner door panel has two pieces: the lower and upper. I paid somebody 400 bucks online. I think it's a F Body Warehouse. I waited 10 weeks. I never got it. And I don't know if it's their fault because they can't get the parts. The, the, whoever was making them has either gone bankrupt or, uh, or they're backlogged or the or they're coming from China and a boat is stuck out in the, at the dock, or who knows. So, but, so I used my credit card and I just called it the other day. And I just said, I, even though this is like two months ago, I said, look, I didn't get this part. I think it's because of COVID. Can you refund me your money? And they just said, yeah. The next day I got, they put 400 bucks back on my credit card. But these companies are also, a lot of these companies, you call them up, you, well, most people don't even answer the phone nowadays, you know that. So you email them, and they say, oh yeah, we're working on it. But I sent, like last six letters I sent to F-Body, F-Body Firebird or whatever it's called. They didn't even respond. But if they do respond, save those emails. So I guess what I'm talking about is parts. Where do you get the parts? Be careful. Save your receipts. Write it down. Right. Keep any communications. And uh, and I guess don't buy too many parts ahead of time. If you're working on the body, for instance, just figure out what body panels you need and order those. Don't 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 go hog wild and start. Ordering stuff you need a mile down the road. Just get what you need now because they just pile up everywhere. Yeah, I, I keep thinking of things to add to this. To this, uh, this video. Some basic tools that you're gonna need, in my opinion. This car has a lot of rust and surface rust. The, the, the panel, the body panels, you're just going to have to sand it out. But the little the bolts and uh, swing arms or springs or whatever you want to try to save, you're going to have to get a sandblaster. And with the sandblaster, it's a Harbor Freight sandblaster, I'll show you. You can't just put sand in there. Get because they're different size, you buy sand, it's different size uh, granules. But get, so get some glass beads. And again, I get everything at Harbor Freight because, I mean, most everything. Because it's cheap. And I might, I might only need this stuff one or two or three times. The Sand Blaster, I've used it probably 100, 200 times. And I'll show you. I think. I think it was like 160 bucks. So if you get so if you get a Harbor Freight sound blaster, now water water is the enemy for a sound blaster because once the stuff gets moist, it sticks together and it doesn't want to shoot through the gun. So I got. A cheapo water separator here, but what I found out works good is before you plug in your air, just point it at something, and in any air that's in the hose, get it out and then plug it in. Also, these things the lights aren't that good, so I just get this light. I don't know where I got it. I just cut a hole in here. This light makes it five times brighter. So when I turn the switch on. The light that came with it, this goes on, that can go on, and also I put a, a, a counterweight on here that, basically a motor with an offset, so if you got a motor, 
like a drill, you get, the drill comes right out of the center, but if you put a counterweight, so it's kind of going like, it'll shake. That'll help the sand go to the center. Just a little motor. I don't know if I can show that. I don't remember where it is right now. It's on there somewhere. It's funny you forget. Also, one of these sand blasters. This sand blaster, again, I want to go cheap. You can put sand in here, just sift it. If you go back to some of my, some of my videos, I show you how to, buy, which sand to buy and how to sift it so it doesn't plug it up. So this is good to use outside on bigger parts, parts that won't fit in there. This will, this will put out like four times as much sand. You gotta have those things. That's one of the tools you gotta have, I think. And again, I got my other videos explaining other stuff. But, and a lift is nice, of course. Not everybody can have a lift. I didn't turn the lights on in the shop. But that is, that is great for me because this car only comes up to about my belly button. I'm 6'2". That's it.